and you wish to uh, follow in your own Bible. One, two, three, three, three. First few verses of uh, Peter's second letter. He might have written hundreds of letters, but I've only got the ones here recorded in Scripture. 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through righteousness of our God and Saviour Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours, grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, may every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is short-sighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Peter chapter 1 verses 1 to 11. Before I say anything about it, I'd like to thank you on best behalf of my own for all the love and the support that you've given us during this last three months or so. Probably one of the most difficult times in our lives, with serious illness and real pain. But four of our children who were able to come one at a time to be with us and for you who love us and have supported us. Can we both say thank you for that? I'm not going to say who wrote this book. It's Simon Peter, verse 1. We'll just leave it at that and believe it, of course, to be true. But hunting through the bookcase that I have, thinking, hoping, seeking help for what I have to say this morning, I came across thrillingly with this book because it's one of my very, very favorite books of all. And you'll see it's well used, but I had forgotten about it. And it's called A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. <coughs> And that's what I want to speak about today, about Peter, about you, and about me. This book is set on the ascent sum, the climbing sum of the book of Psalms. The ascent psalms are Psalm 120 to 134. And they tell the story of the pilgrims going yearly to Jerusalem. And for them, it was a long walk if you were 
at the north. It would be hot. It would be dangerous. It would be steep. But gradually, they go higher and higher until the place they reach in Jerusalem. A long walk. And that is the story of Peter, the author of this apostle. Uh, how does it begin? Well, with two words, Simon Peter. For several weeks we have been looking at Simon Peter, us together here, Sunday by Sunday, and thankful for it. We discovered that he was a man of some complexity. He was used and blessed and somehow a little out of place, a little wrong, a little disappointed. And we have seen it for ourselves, this amazing man. Simon Peter, greatly used, yet strangely, and this is the word I chose purposely, vulnerable. The beginning of his journey, the start of the long pilgrimage. John chapter 1, verses 41 and 42, the first thing Andrew did, having met the Saviour, was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, you will be called Cephas, which in translation is Peter. What a call. What an experience. What an opportunity. Simon Peter. All of us have a name. And the vast majority, if not all of us, are on pilgrimage. We are at different places in the journey. Our names have just picked names and written them down. Robert, Mary, Jane, Susan, Colin, your name. A long obedience in the same direction. And for us, like all pilgrims, all pilgrims of all times, there has been triumph and there has been disaster. There, and Beth and I have been thinking about it as we've been thinking about today, so many glad things, happy and joyful. And those things which disappoint, those things which have concerned, and those things which brought us again to Christ. Peter beginning his journey and what an opportunity he had and what a blessing he received. He saw blind eyes open and dumb speaking and those who couldn't walk, walking to hear the Saviour, but also, and we have learnt it in the last few months, the shame, not only in the Gospel narrative, but in Acts 2. I will never betray you, says this man. And he denies the Lord three times. Have any of us here denied the Lord, one way or another? <coughs> we have come to this table to receive and to admit, and to confess, and to understand that the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ <coughs> carries on cleansing us 
from all sin. Why does it carry on? Because it needs to. Because it does not yet appear what we shall be, being changed from one degree of glory to another on the pilgrim road. Arguments in Acts, even with Paul, doing things which were categorically, we discovered two weeks ago, so powerfully by Andy, which were wrong. But he had begun the journey, and he would never be forsaken, and eventually he was brought home. The re resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The coming of the Holy Spirit. But, but, but. Verse 3 of 2 Peter. The divine power of our Lord Jesus Christ was given to everything we need for life and for godliness through our knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and goodness. The need of life, says Peter, I repeat, Peter, in his epistle. The needs that we have, the disappointments that we have. <coughs> Looking back and wishing to forget but looking forward to the power and grace of God to bring us safely home. I want to tell you just very quickly that when I applied to join Spurgeon's College, I was turned down. The reason I was turned down is because I had no qualifications whatsoever. Dating myself a little bit, I can say to you I left school with no O level. <laughs> Went to Bible College which received people like myself. And all oh, the glory of it all. And oh it's an unending blessing. And there I took university examinations and was accepted to Spurgeon's College and eventually for 10 years I was their chairman but I never told them once that they had turned me down. <laughs> <coughs> A pilgrimage, the disasters and the triumphs and the love and the grace of it all. But this, that those whom God called he also acquaint. So Peter, the divine power, verse 3, is given to everything that we need for life. What a verse. And a verse that has been proved in my life and is being proved in your own. That he is sufficient and in his grace sufficient even to use me. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle. What is an apostle? Well, in its shortest sense, it is one who is sent on a mission, on a journey, a long journey in the same direction and a servant. Well, that sounds a little mundane for me. Lord, make me a servant. When we pray, and we again had a series so helpful on prayer, I felt to myself that my tendency is in my prayer life to tell God what I want. 
My friend, the real prayer life is to ask, what do you want? Gentle Jesus, make it mild, look upon this little child. Pity my simplicity, suffer me to come to thee. God bless Mummy, God bless Margaret, and make me a good boy. And I have to say that little prayer went right into my teens until eventually I thought, Robert, you've got to do something different. My prayer for this and that in others and the purposes and grace of God to use even me. <coughs> Wonderful. But this word servant is rather amazing. If you read particularly in Revelation, you hear the titles given to Christ concerning his kingdom concerning his power and his wealth, wisdom, strength, honor, King of kings, Lord of lords. Well, I want you please then to listen to this, because believe it or not, that only once, and only once, when the Savior described himself as king, found in Matthew 25 and verse 34 to 36. Uh, 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 and do listen, it's important. Then the king, this is Jesus speaking of himself, will say to those on his right, come with me, you blessed by the Father. Take the inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. And then, for I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. <coughs> I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then subsequently they will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger needing clothes or sick in prison and did not help you? Then the king replied, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of the, you did for me. My friend being on the journey, is to know something of servanthood. To be a church is to be servanthood, to be practical and to do that which is of the Lord of glory. Look at verse 5. Very, very telling. For this very reason, very pertinent. Make every effort. Huh. Well, there's the effort in the journey and there's effort to be obedient to the will and purposes of God. There is effort to pick ourselves up and stand when we have fallen over. Those of us who are forgiven are those who forgive. And then these verses, which are really quite fantastic. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith the foundation, goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly and sisterly kindness. And to brotherly and sisterly kindness, love. It's a chain. It's a chain that dare not be broken. <coughs> and what I am so fascinated 
that Paul uses chains, and there are other places where there are chains in theological debate, uh, and matters of some concern or some, or some. But this chain is different for those of us who are on the journey. Uh, I, I haven't got time, I've just peeped at my watch, to say everything about everyone. But let me just take out certain words of the chain. You don't break the chain, but there are words for each. Self-control, he says, for the journey. Carrying on is the exact phrase that he used. Sometimes we have turned back, but move on. And then these two such ordinary but precious words, kindness and love. Being kind, over the decades of our ministry, we have met some people who have not been kind. And some who are very sparing in love, ordinary things. For the journey, and this is the great reward, verses 10 and 11, therefore, my brothers and sisters, be all the more eager. Well, this is such a, a fantastic passage of, uh, of scripture. Try harder. Be consistent. Love. Be eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do all these things, you will never fall. And you will reach Welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wonderful. I want to tell you quickly a story that happened to me, and every word that I say to you now is true, and I just made reference to it in our house group a few weeks ago. I was asked to go to Madras, <coughs> Then I now, but then Madras, <coughs> to speak at a conference there. South East India. And I was met <coughs> by a taxi man who, on the way out, pointed to quite an insignificant hill, although it's now called a mountain and said, uh, do you know what that is? So I looked and said, uh, no, I don't know. And he says, it's Stephen's Mount. Thomas, sorry, Mount. There's a tradition that Thomas preached on that hill and died there. And I gave one of those polite smiles that only English people can do. <laughs> and he caught it and was annoyed by it. Yes, he said, there is a line across India from the top to the southeast here of Tom and his ministry. And it ended there. James, the upper room, finding the disciples ecstatic. We've seen the Lord. James had seen Jesus dead. sophisticated, educated sort of man, unless I can touch the wound, unless I can be sure I can possibly believe. The next week, 
Jesus appears to him, calls him forward. Thomas, do your exercise. Didn't need to. My Lord and my God. And the journey started. My friend, Jerusalem to Madrid is a long, long way. All across Europe, all across Asia, all across China, <coughs> all the way down India. I went back that day, not for a purpose, but because we were <coughs> picking somebody else up from a later plane. And just quietly, I stood on one side at the hill and was moved almost to tears. A long obedience in the same direction which it ended there. My friend, you and I are on the journey. We have given testimony to our beginning, as most of you can, if not all, praise, praise Him. There's been joy, so many things to thank God of, and difficulties and heartaches too. For some of us, and very definitely we're very near the end of the journey. We can almost see the glory. For some of us we have the demands and responsibilities of business and family and Christ. Some of us have just started. So long thy power has blessed me, short still will lead me on, or more and fan, or crack and torrent, till the night is done. Strength and promise. Verse 3, divine power, divine power given to us all. We got home from here a few months ago and the phone went and it was our third daughter, Susan. Susan can be a little hot sometimes. <laughs> and on this occasion she was hot. Because they had sung her favourite hymn, although they didn't sing. They didn't know the tune, they said. We're going to sing that hymn now. And if somebody is singing something else, they've got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this glorious truth, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, <coughs> thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Let's stand together and sing. <coughs> 